Tim, let me start with you because yeah. I look at the major indexes right now, uh, all up at least 1%. The Russell 2000 really stands out with that 3% gain uh, because Jay Powell has moved forth with declaring, as much as he can declare, I guess, that there will be a rate cut in September. You know what's so surprising to me is seeing the move in small caps because I thought this was priced in. I thought everybody was expecting him to say something <laughs> like he said today. Did you guys hear any surprises today? I mean, the time has come is sort of the phrase of the moment, but it, it doesn't seem like, it seems like a lot of investors knew this was coming, yet the market hadn't completely priced it in. Well, I think what was the surprise there was, especially Bill Dudley had talked about this in an opinion column for Bloomberg earlier, uh, actually last week, and of course, former, when you're thinking about the New York Fed there, but he was thinking that the Fed chair wouldn't be as specific in, in signal as much as he did, and so that's what markets weren't expecting. Well, I also think that the whole, we don't seek or welcome further labor market cooling was pretty clear. It was mm -hmm. like our reaction function will be to the labor market, and if it gets worse, we're going to be cutting ASAP. Like the, that seemed to be sort of a mover there for me. So what that means for markets is that everyone is now fixated on two Fridays from now when the jobs report comes out. And wait. what do you do until then? We call out that day. Well, we just spoke to Louis Navalier who said he's <laughs> advising clients to just chill until Labor Day. Also NVIDIA earnings next week. That's a long time, guys. Yeah, it's definitely a long time. Uh, all right, there we go. Our scores are settling here for the day on this Friday. We're looking at an S&P uh, closing up. We're settling out, but up by about 1.1%. So we are right around uh, the highs of the session here. We're also looking at the NASDAQ up by 1.5%. The Dow Jones Industrial Average up 1.1%. So the ra we definitely rallied into the close here. All right, well, taking a look at uh, under the hood of the S&P 500, we didn't see the vast majority of stocks move higher today. 434 names in the index moved higher, 68 moved lower. Yeah, it's a pretty broad advance here. And I'm looking at the 11 sector groups, even the 24 industry groups. And look at that, everyone. It's a pesto pie or a spinach pie, however you want to look at it. The only Little sliver, tomato there. I know, I know. The <laughs> only sliver of red there is in household and personal products and a little bit of maybe software and services. But you're talking about a lot of green there. It's led by, the gains are, that is, uh, real estate investment trust up 2%, consumer discretionary, and tech all gaining at least 1.6%. Okay, well, you heard Jess say the name NVIDIA because I've got my eye on what happened with NVIDIA today, the best performing stock in the S&P 500 on a point basis today, higher by 4.5%. Keeping an eye on the stock because Wednesday after Bell, the company reports earnings. Uh, we did have Esha Day on our program a little earlier. She said, uh, she reminded us there could be big implications, of course, for the market, given that it's the second uh, heaviest stock in the S&P 500. Um, it's outsized weighting, of course, uh, and it could move 9% in either direction following the report. That's at least according to Citigroup's equity trading desk. Also, keeping an eye on shares of uh, Workday, they moved higher on the day today. They rallied after the company said it would increase profitability over the next three years to enable strategic investments, 12.5% to the upside for Workday. The company CEO said it'll save money in part by being selective in hiring and using AI in its call centers and finance departments. Finally, shares of the fast casual chain Kava surging today. The company raised its full year outlook. It post posted second quarter results that beat the average analyst estimates. Uh, the latest indication that diners see good value in fast casual restaurant shares surging today. What is that, guys? Is that close to 20% higher? It's close to 20% yeah. on the yeah. day? Wow. Really? Huge. Uh, yeah, okay. That's a lot of uh, what, steak bowl. Is that what it is? Yeah, it's yes. all the things. Okay. It's, it, we, we talked to the CEO, and he was basically, I'm taking market share from everybody. I mean, wow. I'm summing that up, but yeah. You tell him to open one near our office because there isn't one yet? There, I mean, it's kind of close. Okay. You can order in, you know. They're, they are expanding. They, okay. are they are expanding. expanding. Yeah. All right, thanks. All right, guys, I'll take the decliners. Since I'm wearing red here, I'm going to start off with Intuit. It's obviously, we know it's a tax preparation software company. So if you look at this stock down almost 7%, it's worst day since May 24th. Its latest results actually did beat expectations, though the problem here was that it gave a full year outlook that was strong as viewed, though it executives do recalibrate here long-term growth expectations. So that's thought to weigh on the stock moving forward here. Another one I'm looking at, Las Vegas Sands down about 1%, worst day since August 14th. What happened here was, UBS actually cut the recommendation on the casino operator to neutral. So they did say that the slow recovery and the company's Macau business was what was bringing that down. And then, of course, lastly, Red Robin. So this is a gourmet burgers here, American restaurant chain, down about 8.3%, worst day since August 9th here. So when you're looking at this, it's EBITDA guidance for the full year, uh, missed expectations. This does have a market cap less than $1 billion, and this stock's down actually roughly 65% year-to-date, guys. All right, I'm taking a look at the bond market. No surprise, it was a 
rally across the board. The biggest move really came in the front end. You had yields closing down by about nine basis points in the 10 year. Uh, you had yields down by about five basis points. So you continue to have that bull move into the market, right? If you expect the Fed to go, you're going to see a lot of buying coming into the front end uh, as we're anticipating those lower rates. Now, interestingly enough, uh, usually you might wind up seeing the back end move a little bit differently if you're really worried about growth. But clearly the market seems to have a little more confidence in those rate cuts coming and then helping any sort of growth issues there. Um, and then we're just waiting, guys. We're just going to wait till jobs. I mean, Jay Powell really set us up for that, that that's going to be the reaction function for them. It's going to be the reaction function then for the market. I appreciate NVIDIA is here next week. Jess won't be here for that, but she promises to be covering it from Europe for us. <laughs> that's yeah. right. really? No, I am really. going on vacation. Not sure where yet, guys, but somewhere in Jess Europe. Jess is what you call a last minute planner. <laughs> yeah. I'm just going to book something tomorrow and hop on a plane. But she said she's still going to be like tuned into email and stuff for of NVIDIA. Of course. Like, yeah. We don't want to miss these NVIDIA results. Come on. Okay, guys. that happens on the 28th. We'll bring you those numbers, of course, as soon as we get them. Uh, we're also getting inflation data in the coming weeks. Alex, as you mentioned, the jobs report is one to watch. That September Fed meeting happening in the middle part of the month. Um, there's a lot happening in the next few weeks that we're, of course, going to keep an eye on.